Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. So it's been a while guys, I know that I put out some videos yesterday but they were kind of like the last videos that I'd filmed at my old place and uh, yeah thanks for putting up with me, I know I was gone for like I think about a week which is the longest time I've been away from the channel. I think I've pretty much been putting out videos every day for the last year and a half so yeah it was a bit of a break but yeah I'm back now. So this should be a fun one, like George Carlin is one of my favourite comedians ever, like his, his delivery and his style of comedy is so unique like he says stuff that a lot of other comedians would just never ever think to say and this one is called list of people who ought to be killed so i don't know what i'm expecting from this but it should be a fun one so let's do it now something else a lot of you are aware of those of you with illegal cable hookups will be aware of the fact <laughs> that uh, one of the things hookups. i like to do in my shows is complain you know it's kind of a motif for me complaining and of course this weird culture we live in leaves you no shortage of things to complain about so this next piece of material like most good ideas is fairly simple it's just a list of people who ought to be killed <laughs> All right, George, let's see what you got. Starting with these people who read self-help books. <laughs> Why do so many people need help? Life is not that complicated. You get up, you go to work, you eat three meals, you take one good shit, and you go back to bed. <laughs> What's the fucking mystery? And the part I really don't understand, if you're looking for self-help, why would you read a book written by somebody else? That's not self-help, that's help. <laughs> There's no such thing as self-help. If you did it yourself, you didn't need help. You did it yourself. Try to pay attention to the language we've all agreed on. And a similar, a similar mystery to me. Motivation books, motivation seminars. Why would anyone need to be motivated by someone else? I say if you lack motivation, a seminar isn't gonna help you. What you really need is to be smashed in the head 30 or 40 times with a golf club. <laughs> That'll fucking motivate you. <laughs> or else it'll at least get you up and moving around the room. You know, locate your socks, shit like that. I don't know about that one. I, to be honest, both of them, I think there's genuinely books out there that I've read that have really like given me like moments of clarity. I don't know. Get the day rolling. Motivation is bullshit. If you ask me, this country could use a little less motivation. The people who are motivated are the ones who are causing all the trouble. <laughs> Stock swindlers, serial killers, child molesters, Christian conservatives. These people are highly motivated. Highly motivated. Yeah. And anyway, I think motivation is overrated. You show me some lazy prick who's lying around all day watching game shows and stroking his penis, and I'll show you someone's not causing any fucking trouble, okay? <laughs> all right, yeah. Hey. All right. <laughs> Stroking Here's his. another pack of low-grade morons who ought to be locked into portable toilets and set on fire. <laughs> These people with bumper stickers that say, we are the proud parents of an honor student <laughs> at the... Cool. Do people do that in America? I've never seen that here. For the Midvale Academy, or whatever other innocent sounding name has been assigned to the indoctrination center where their child has been sent to be stripped of his individuality and turned into an obedient, soul dead conformist member of the American consumer culture. Wow. I mean, there is some truth, I guess, in that. Proud parents, what kind of empty people need to validate themselves through the achievements of their children? How would you like that to, to live with a couple of these misfits? How's that science project coming along, Justin? Fuck you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> you simple-minded prick. Mind your own business and pass the Cheerios. <laughs> Here's a bumper sticker I'd like to see. We are the proud parents of a child whose self-esteem is sufficient that he doesn't need us promoting his minor scholastic achievements on the back of our car. Mm -hmm. that would be really good. Mm -hmm. or... But we live in a society that, you know, values people of status. So uh, as, I, as good as it sounds from George, it's just, I just don't think it's realistic. 
Or, we are the proud parents of a child who has resisted his teacher's attempts to break his spirit and bend him to the will of his corporate masters. <laughs> Just be a nice little for change, you know? Here's something realistic. We have a daughter in public school who hasn't been knocked up yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We have a son in public school who hasn't shot any of his classmates yet. But he does sell drugs to your honor student. <laughs> Ooh. Risky Plus, material. You knocked up your daughter. <laughs> then there are the people who aren't too proud of their children. We are the embarrassed parents of a cross-eyed little nitwit who at the age of 10 not only continues to wet the bed, but also shits on the school bus. <laughs> Something like that on the back of the car might give the child a little more incentive, you know? <laughs> Get him to try a little harder next semester. He's basically bullying. <laughs> Here are some more parents who ought to be beaten with heavy clubs and left bleeding in the moonlight. <laughs> these are the ones who carry their babies around in these backpacks or front packs or slings or whatever these devices are called that are apparently designed to leave the parents' hands free to sort through high-end merchandise and reach for their platinum credit cards. Because it's always these upscale, yuppie-looking, Greenpeace, environmentally conscious assholes who have mine, you know? I say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Natural Fibers. I say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Natural Fibers. Natural it's not camping fibers. equipment, it's a baby. <laughs> Touch the little prick now and then. He'll thank you for it someday. I bet there's people in the crowd These that are, the are same exactly people who like sort this. their garbage, jog with their dogs, and listen to Steely Dan. <laughs> You just like to take them out deep into the forest and disembowel them with a wooden cooking spoon. Oh my God. Here are some more people who ought to be smashed across the face repeatedly with a piece of heavy mining equipment. <laughs> These grown men, grown men, who refer to their fathers as my daddy. You know, yeah, gee, you hear a lot of this stupid shit in the South. These rebel assholes, you know. My daddy, my daddy, yeah, my daddy. Well, you know, my daddy used to say, my daddy used to say, blah, 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 Oh, he did, did he? Well, wasn't that fucking enlightening? My daddy used to say, fuck your daddy. Fuck your daddy. In his wrinkled, rustic, rural country asshole. Grow up, Billy Joe, Carl, Bob, Danny, Frank. Isn't it funny how the majority of like dudes who like get up in years end up a little bit like George, <laughs> just like full of opinions and not afraid to just say it. They don't care who they offend. <laughs> You're not six anymore. More like nine. Here's another unfortunate pack of mutants who ought to be penciled in for a sudden visit from the angel of death. <laughs> oh my These God. These guys. These guys who can't tell you about a phone call they had without giving you this shit. Oh, man, I hate that. The fucking pinky and the thumb. <laughs> like they attended mime college. <laughs> studied under Marcel Marceau. So I call her up, you know? And I'm talking to her. <laughs> and she fucking hangs up on me. He sounds like Tony Soprano. Hey, where's the gabagool? <laughs> so I hang up on her. And she calls me back. I fucking hang up again. I say, hey, Bruno, thanks for the visual aid. But we all understand the concept of the telephone. Hey, you hold Bruno. your hand, you talk into it. Excuse me, Bruno, incoming call. Hey, Bruno. Oh, hey, it's for you. Live from New York City, New York. There's another bunch of pus-headed telephone cretins. These self-important techno dicks who walk around with these hands-free telephone headsets and earpieces. Mr. Self-important doesn't want to be too far from the phone in case Henry Kissinger calls. He's got the Dalai Lama on line two. Who was Kissinger? I've heard that name before. Was he a president? I feel like he was a president. I say, hey, spaceman. As long as your hands are free, reach over here and fondle my balls, would you? <laughs> oh, George. And 
answering machines. Starting with these people who think it's cute to let their children record the outgoing message. You know? Uh, oh, man. You can't I've understand a, a word of it because the kid's a fucking imbecile. My name is Stacy. I'm five years old. My mommy and daddy aren't home. I'm just going to say hello to you. Here's my message, Stacy. I'm coming over to your house with a big knife. And I'm going to kill mommy and daddy. Then I'm going to peel off their skin and make a funny hat. After that, I'm going to take out my huge ding dong and stick it right in your. Oh my God! You could never make that joke today. I don't think you could. You, you wouldn't get away with it. You'd get cancelled. These are the same parents who, at Christmas time, send you pictures of their children. <laughs> pictures you didn't ask for, and you don't want. <laughs> but it is fun throwing the pictures away, isn't it? I don't even look at the fucking Christmas card. so car. mean. Oh, my Who's God. Who's this? Luann is 12 this year. Fuck Luann. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I give a shit how old she is. Does she have any tits yet? <laughs> Send me a picture of Luann's tits. Then I know I'm going to have a happy New Year, too. <laughs> then... Just to compound oh. your holiday pleasure, they enclose a family newsletter. Just what you're hoping for. News about people you can barely fucking remember. We're so proud of Brad, he's been accepted into dental school. Yeah, in the Philippines. <laughs> After four tries. Fuck Brad and everybody who looks like Brad. Judging from his picture, I think he's jerking off too much. <laughs> Keep him away from Luann. <laughs> Here's another bunch of genetic defectives who've been turned loose on answering machines. These guys who cannot resist the urge to put music on their outgoing message. You know, some guy spends $8 at Radio Shack and suddenly he's a fucking record producer. And because he's busy in the basement jacking off his dog, oh, I come on, have George. to listen to substandard music. <laughs> and it's always rotten music, you know? It's either New Age, that pointless, meandering zombie noise played by pseudo-spiritual lunatics who think wind chimes are a musical instrument, <laughs> or else it's soft rock. Soft rock, that lame-ass, weak, non-threatening, suburban white boy junk played by bands like Men Without Testicles. <laughs> Oh, and folks, on these answering machines, do me a favor, would you please? When you record your outgoing message, don't bother telling me you can't come to the phone. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> Apparently, that's why we have these machines. <laughs> and don't tell me... George definitely hates answering machines. At least three of these things have been answering machine related. <laughs> Leave my name and number. Somehow, I figured that out. <laughs> And if you work in an office, never mind that stuff, I'm away from my desk. If you had to take a shit, say so. <laughs> you say, hi, this is Mary Louise. I had the Mexican jalapeno bean chili dip. And I washed it down with a gallon of gin. I'll be in and out all day. There are some more people who ought to be strapped into chairs and beaten with hammers. People who wear visors. Let me ask you something. What the fuck is the point in wearing half a hat? Either get a hat or don't. What is a visor? I'm trying to imagine it. Like, I've, I've never heard, like, what's a visor? No one's interested in the top of your head. Go back to the store and tell them to give you the rest of the hat. Oh, was they it one of those you. baseball caps Better that doesn't still, have the get top yourself bit. one of them little Jewish hats and sew it to your visor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Then you got yourself a full-fledged fucking hat, my friend. Here are some more musical vermin whose mothers we wish had had medical plans that included abortion. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
Oh. These singers, these singers who think they're so special, they only need one name. Bono, Sting, Jewel, Tiffany, Prince. What a crock of shit. Get a fucking last name, would you please? I got a nice two-word name for you. Pretentious cocksucker. How do you like that? Bono, Sting. It's not bad enough the music sucks, but with no last name, you can't find out where they live to throw a fucking bomb through their window. It's frustrating. Here are some more people who deserve an inoperable tumor at the base of their spines. Oh, oh my God, George. These guys who fly around the world in a fucking balloon. You know, What is this, 1850? Get a fucking airline ticket, will you please? When are the media gonna realize no one's interested in some rich trouser stain who's so bored he's gotta fly around the balloon all day? I hope the next guy gets hit by lightning. He flies around in little fart circles. and lands in a sewage treatment pond oh. and sinks with the rest of the turds. <laughs> Mr. Lighter Than Air. <laughs> oh, my God. Here is another... Do you know what I'd love? A, a list of things George actually likes. Just, you know, what do you like, George? <laughs> Pack of jack-offs who ought to be strangled in front of their children. <laughs> People who pay for inexpensive items with a credit card. <laughs> you know, folks, take my word for this. Raisinets is not a major purchase. <laughs> Get some fucking cash together. No one should be paying a bank 18% interest on Tic Tacs. <laughs> but, they, but they might be trying to boost their credit rating. <laughs> Up the fucking line, too. Some dorky looking prick with a fanny pack waiting to be approved for a bag of cheese doodles. <laughs> I need this like I need an infected scrotum. Get some fucking money. Next guy ahead of me online pays for Newsweek with a credit card is getting stabbed in the eyes. Oh, George, George. And I'm getting really sick of guys named Todd. You know, yeah, it's just a goofy, it's a goofy fucking name, okay? Hi, what's your name? Todd. When I hear the name Todd, I think of The Simpsons. Rod and Todd Flanders. <laughs> I'm Todd. And this is Blake and Blair and Blaine and Brent. And Jaden. Where are all these goofy Brayden. fucking boys' names coming from? Taylor, Tyler, Jordan, Flynn. These are not real names. <laughs> you want to hear a real name? Eddie. <laughs> Eddie is a real name. Whatever happened to Eddie? He was here a minute ago. Joey and Jackie and Johnny and Phil, Bobby and Tommy and Danny and Bill. What happened? Todd <laughs> and Cody and Dylan and Cameron and Tucker. <laughs> Tucker. Hi, Tucker. I'm Tucker. Todd. Hi, Todd. I'm Tucker. <laughs> Fuck Tucker. Tucker sucks. And fuck Tucker's friend, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's another soft name for a boy, Kyle. <laughs> soft names make soft people. I'll bet you anything that 10 times out of 10, Nicky, Vinny, and Tony will beat the shit out of Ty, <laughs> Kyle, and Tucker. <laughs> you know what, there's, I think there's something to that. <laughs> people named like Vince and stuff like that tend to be, you know, every Vince I've met has been a pretty tough dude. <laughs> Thank you very much. Here are some more people with missing chromosomes who ought to be thrown screaming from a helicopter. <laughs> gun enthusiasts, you know? Oh yeah, I'm a gun. Whoa. I'm a gun enthusiast. Whoa. Oh yeah, well I'm a blowjob enthusiast. Whoa. You want to see me shoot? <laughs> Cock this and I'll discharge a load for you. <laughs> and I'm not against guns. I'm not one of those mindless Hollywood cocksuckers. I'm not against guns. I'm not against bullets. I'm not even against people shooting each other. <laughs> Shit, shooting somebody's part of the American dream. I don't care who it is. Parents, teachers, kids, fuck them. Let them get shot. Doesn't bother me. 
But speaking of... It's interesting because the crowd is in New York. And New York, I think, is quite like um, anti-firearm, you know, firearm, I think. So it's interesting to hear the crowd just go silent, <laughs> don't you think? Mindless Hollywood cocksuckers. Before Charlton Heston became president of these dickless lunatics in the NRA, they had a different guy. They had a different guy. He's still one of their major spokesmen. His name is Wayne LaPierre. What kind of a name for a gun nut is Wayne LaPierre? Doesn't this sound a little fruity to you? <laughs> Hi, I'm Wayne. I'm a gun person. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> uh, you know what this prick's name ought to be? Biff Webster. <laughs> Spud Crowley, a man's name. Chuck Steak. <laughs> Steak. Here are some more men who ought to be strapped to a gurney and castrated with fishing knives. <laughs> White guys who shave their heads completely bald. You know? Why? Why though? They're so ashamed they lost 11 hairs, they're gonna try to turn it into some kind of a masculine statement. I say, hey, you goofy looking baldy headed fuck. Looks good on black guys. On you, it's ugly, repulsive, and disgusting. You wanna be bald? Do what I did. Wait a while. <laughs> oh my God. I wonder how many people he's offended in the audience. Like, but they're still cheering, so that's good. Meantime, there's no excuse for running around looking like a freshly circumcised dick. <laughs> and just to wind up this little group of complaints, Finally, this is a, a group of social criminals. These people in the space program. Nassholes, I call them. <laughs> in case you haven't heard, the latest disaster for the rest of the universe is that the United States is gonna go to Mars, okay? Oh yeah, we're gonna go to Mars. And then of course, we're going to colonize deep space with our microwave hot dogs and plastic vomit, <laughs> fake dog shit and cinnamon dental floss and lemon scented toilet paper and sneakers with lights in the heels. <laughs> and all these other impressive things we've done down here. But let me ask you this, let me ask you this. What are we gonna tell the Intergalactic Council of Ministers the first time one of our teenage mothers throws her newborn baby into a dumpster? Huh? <sighs> How are we gonna explain that to the space people? How are we gonna let them know that our ambassador was only late for the meeting because his breakfast was cold and he had to spend half an hour punching his wife around the kitchen? Oh. And what are they gonna think oh. when they find out it's just a local custom that over 80 million women in the third world have had their clitorises forcibly removed in order to reduce their sexual pleasure so they won't cheat on their husbands? Oh. Can't can't you just sense how eager the rest of the universe is for us to show up? Can't you see him out there? Wow. Wow. That was savage. I mean, half of the things George said in this video would never be said today. Not that I disagree with them, like he said a lot of truth, but man, oh my God. This is why I love George Carlin. This is why I wish he was still here because can you imagine what he'd say about today, the world we're living in today with what we've just been through with the pandemic? Just fantastic. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.